Uh, a second here. All right. Hope everybody's well in this winter wonderland. Absolutely. Yeah. So approval of the agenda, be it resolved that the Dunter and Hall Board hereby approves the agenda date of February 16 as presented. In favor? I don't know what, so I can't be in favor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in favor. We got Mary and was that Ron? Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah. At this point, if you could disclose any uh, pecuniary interest in nature thereof. None disclosed. Approval of the minutes be resolved. Dentron Hall Board hereby approve the minutes dated January 19th, 2021, as presented. I will. Mary. Keckney. Yeah. Perfect. And Doug. Good. Uh, business arising from the minutes. Uh, flooring quotes. I'm actually going to be getting a <clears throat> quote from uh, Quanberry tomorrow. So we'll not have that for this meeting, but he, he said he would get me one tomorrow based on our discussions. Uh, furnace replacement updates. Um, Scott called me last week. Um, the Duntruin Highlands Nordic bought a geothermal furnace in 2015, I believe it was. Uh, it's a flow through unit, which means it takes water out of the, out of the well, flows it through and disposes of it. They did not have enough water capacity. They tried again the next year briefly and decided that it wasn't working. They pulled it out, put a propane unit in. Um, Rick Redpath bought the unit, put it in his house, only hooked up the electric banks right away and was gonna dig the geothermal in, but they've come to the conclusion that it's far too big of a unit for his little house. So he's looking at putting a propane furnace in Scott's offering us this furnace. Uh, he said that it should be about 7,000 or less uh, was kind of the words I understood. And so I asked Zeke and another guy about 1,000 to 1,500 to put it in. Um, so the furnace still has warranty till 2024. So we would have a, a furnace that's only really ran less than a season um to do what we need to do and we'd be all in at like possibly eight grand or less so and warranty till 2024 you said yes <coughs> so i know it's not the 10-year warranty but it's also not a twenty thousand dollar unit yeah so it does um now my intention was to talk to councillor mckechnie um ahead of time and I kind of forgot. Um, the township had earmarked up to $10,000 for us to put the furnace in. If we get it, if we get it done for a lesser amount, would the township consider still giving us the 10,000 and then we have that as our contingency to do the renovations upstairs? Um, I can't really speak. Uh, for the township. Yeah. It's a, especially since this is, uh, you know, like available on YouTube. <laughs> uh, so I, I don't want to put my, my, I don't want to say anything I shouldn't say, Dave. But, okay. Yeah. But I, I think that, uh, you know, I, the money, I think the money will be there. I, you know, I, I can talk to them, but I think the money will be there. So, um, but I, I just don't, I can't commit a hundred percent. No, no, that's fine. And I, it's my fault. I intended to talk to you earlier to, so you could talk to council or whoever and find out what the deal was. But um, my thought was that if we got away with an $8,000 furnace rather versus a 
17 or 18, whatever the big number was, um, that just frees right. up a little extra cash to do our renovations. And if you're yeah. considering doing any of the work that Joseph has on his list, we need all the cash we can muster. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I can be fairly persuasive of counsel. So I, I, I don't think there's, uh, I think there's a fairly good chance I can get them to, to go with that. So yeah, they had already earmarked the money for us. And all we're doing is kind of diverting a little bit because we've changed our thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, I think originally they said half of the cost up to 10,000. Right. So, I yeah. mean, it would just be asking them to sort of yeah. relieve the half, but because we have been able to get a, such a good deal, maybe they'd be more lenient to yeah. uh, provide the full cost. Yep. In the capacity. I'll, I'll take that to council and ask them anyway. Thank you. The capacity of the furnace that, that's available is enough for the hall? It's a six ton unit. And I looked at, uh, I got Scott to go in and look at the, uh, <coughs> the thermal breaks. So originally what we had in there was electric furnace whenever we started putting those thermal dampers in. So the flow of them is, is a reduction in, in duct size. Yeah. So he's looking at the fact that we should probably increase them. And if that one geothermal guy is saying that the it can't get rid of enough heat off the top of the plenum, then having a bigger flow through these heat links would be a better idea. Yeah. Um, he thought about, I have to look at my notes, I think it was 600 bucks to change them out to the larger size. So, okay. That would be all tied in at the same time and get done at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, no, that definitely sounds sounds good. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, we'll see what the township comes back with at that. But uh, I I'd like to think either way, it sounds like our best option. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's not the the full cash, but we do get a warranty for three years versus fixing what we got. We have zero warranty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, and, and dollar wise is pretty much about the same. I think it was seven grand to fix what's there. Yeah. So, yeah, totally. Okay. Uh, so I'll make a motion that we uh, purchase the unit from Rick Redpath and uh, have it installed by Zeke. I think it was. I believe that? so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for the costs that are quoted, roughly eight, so it sounds like 8,500. And, uh, and then, you know, we'll wait on what the, uh, what the reply is from the township, but either way we need to, we, you know, the furnace yeah. can go yeah, in. Do you want to, do you want to put amendment on there, Gord, about uh, Scott to change the uh, heat links at the same time? Yeah. Yeah, and we also uh, amended uh, at the same time, Scott from uh, Campbell Mechanical. Campbell Mechanical will replace the heat links, create better flow. Good. Okay, that's great. Uh, so is that a motion? You, is that a motion you put on the floor there, Gord? Then yeah, yeah. A worst case scenario, I mean, if the township says no, that wasn't the deal, hopefully they'll still pay half of the. They'll, they'll still, yeah, they'll still pay the, the five or 4,000 yeah. or whatever it is. They'll still pay that much. Um, yeah. 4,500, whatever it is. But that's still only 4,500 out of our budget rather oh. than 9,000 yeah. out of our budget. Yeah, right. Yeah, and we were looking at going to the town for a, a loan in, you know, if we were going to over go over our costs for the renovation. So, you know, that 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 would that value actually would cover the difference, just less than so, the difference on the. So, so before we uh, before we vote on your motion, then uh, yeah. um, just so I'm clear, so basically. You want me to go to uh, the township uh, and and ask them for if we can use that money that up to ten thousand dollars for these other renovations. 
and that's fine. I understand that. So what about this uh, $5,000 to cover any uh, overage on the, the, you know, in case we run over and, so that, that, uh, and go into the red? Do you so still that, want would that? Be all, that would be all included then? Yeah, if, if we go ahead, if we go ahead, uh, Doug, if we go ahead with, so we get this new furnace and the total cost is say $9,000. Uh, right. And uh, or, originally the township had said half or up to, you know, 10,000. So right. instead of us getting the, uh, the other furnace that we were looking at, which was gonna be in the 18,000 range, uh, where right. they would be in for nine. Um, we're seeing if they would just, because the cost of the installation of this new one's going to be nine, if they would cover that right. foregoing having to approach for the loan, because at this point we would no longer need that buffer of money. Okay, so you don't want, you don't want that, uh, that loan then, uh, that $5,000 loan it pending, pending, pending them their acceptance of uh, going all in on the furnace. All right, I think I think they'd be more agreeable to going all in on the furnace than than the loan. Oh yeah. So, yeah, so that's fine. Okay. Uh, I just didn't know whether you wanted me to ask for both of them. That was all. So, no. Anyway, I no go yeah. going with okay. the cheaper furnace frees up some of our money yeah. and a bit of the township's money. That should cover our renovations and and be all good. Okay. Yep. Perfect. That's fine. Uh, all in favor of the motion? Fair. Yeah. Kayla, was that clear? Yeah. So, Gord, I can't actually have you make the motion. So, I'll just get two other names. I'll make it. Okay. I'll second it. <laughs> all right. Excellent. Uh, Mary. Financial report. Um, not much to report. Um, current bank balance is uh, $25,969. Um, we did get $100 um, e-transfer for a rental in the last month. And then all it is is the hydro bill and calling with fuels. So okay. there, you know, we're Holding, yeah, and, uh, holding steady at that, you know, twenty five thousand dollar mark. Good, and, and I think uh, Joseph notified me that he was making uh, a payment today, so you wouldn't have received that yet. But that'll go through tomorrow, or the next day, I guess, through the township. Right. So that'd be another thousand, right? Yeah. Right. Right. So again. We're holding around twenty-five thousand. Perfect. Okay, which is good. Yeah. Great. Uh, events updates or general activity. Ian, I guess you're in tomorrow. Yep. Oh, and you said you were able to get the you put the heat up. Yes, that's correct. Perfect. Good. And how many are you allowed to have right now for your course? Well, the gathering for indoors is 10. So I've got nine students plus one instructor. So that's my 10. Yeah. So I've added more courses uh, to accommodate all the people that are waiting to take the training. So I sent a list to Monica. Perfect. Monica, you were. Yeah. 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 So, so what does that look like? Is it like basically weekly or just, it, I, I think the biggest thing is to know that schedule just so that Joseph is aware just because now okay. the, the wa washroom is being um, shared. He said he cleaned the washroom today and he is aware that, uh, that Ian's in tomorrow. What time do you start Ian? Start. I get, well, I, I arrive, uh, about 11, uh, seven 15 and, and the students start coming in at about quarter to eight. Okay. Uh, I did see Joseph tonight when I was over there. Uh, he was just getting ready to leave. And uh, I checked out the washroom jabs. Obviously, they had some bleach in there. They were, they were clean, so that was great. <laughs> right. Okay, so he, 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 he knows what time you're coming and everything? So yeah, yeah. my wife was talking to him, and uh, yeah, he was updated, so. Perfect. 
Earth. Gord, I sent you all the dates. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you want to coordinate with Joseph. All yeah, day. I just I just got that. Excellent. Thank you. Perfect. Um, Monica, can I have that list of dates too? So that if I get a chance and we decide that we can go back in and start renovating, I know when Ian's there. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I guess based, based on that too, uh, well, uh, we can move over to the reno uh, side of things. Um, I sent a message to Joseph Paddock today just asking uh, now that we're in red, can we be in uh, dealing with carpet and you know just not the not the full um, rental permit, but just the upgrading of the facilities that we you know the the, the bathroom facilities and the carpet. So I, I, will, I haven't heard anything back. I'm not sure, Dave, if they've reached out to you at all. No, I, I haven't. Okay. Um, now that the lockdown is off, I was wondering if that would be enough. Um, yeah. Kayla or Doug, have you got any input on what we're allowed to do in the halls yet? I don't. I, I don't. I know nothing, David. I, all I know is what Terry sent you, that email that he sent you. Uh, yeah. uh, that's all I know. So, okay. uh, you know, saying to stop work. So I don't, don't know anything. And I've got nothing for you. I don't think I was even on that email that I can remember. <laughs> uh, I don't think you were, no. We, we're, ha no. We're, we're having that uh, uh, community halls review tomorrow and Terry will be there. So I can ask him then at the start of it. You know, okay, please do, yep. If you guys can go ahead. And... Yep, okay. Perfect. Uh, Jim's not on, is he yet? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just wondering if he'd had an opportunity to, uh, to move ahead with that permit. Uh, I will check with him if he doesn't come on and just get an update on that, find out where we are with that. Um, Anything else with regards to facility? I don't think I'm going to uh, deal with the dog park. I'm going <laughs> to leave it as it is. There's no sense in digging that out. I got a question. Uh, who who does the uh, parking lot there? Eric uh, Miller. He does half of it. OK, because it was uh, it was about a foot of snow in there about an uh, hour and a half ago. Yeah, he'll probably he'll be, be there. Tomorrow morning, I miss him. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. About three o'clock in the morning, he comes through Duntroon and looks after all that. Okay. Yeah, we're not expected to really get any snow tonight. So. Could we maybe be telling Eric about all these dates of Ian? I was just thinking that. Yeah, it wouldn't I hurt. Thought, yeah, I'll text him and tell him just so he has a heads up. Yeah, like in the in the front part there, like for the mail where you pick up your mail, it's it's not a big deal. I I usually grab that spot, but it'd be the larger parking lot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you. Yeah, they're usually he's usually through pretty early. Okay. Does he do the whole parking lot though, or just by the door? He does the walkway. He does the sort of uh, north swath of the parking lot. And yeah, in front of the hall. So, you know, even if the, the whole parking, the, all, there'll be enough parking along the north side of the, the parking lot. Okay, I'll let him know. I did the township, the township goes through and does the other part, but I mean, once again, okay. they're, they're, they're going through probably regularly, especially right now. Okay. Propane was uh, filled uh, after last meeting. And then uh, I checked on Sunday, it's down to 35 now again. So let's call again. Okay. That's a fair bet because we, it, the, the temp was right down to like 40, like it was set at like 44. So that, no, that's where Joseph is. That was all the propane downstairs for the what? 
just for the heating? Propane, the propane's only in the basement. Oh yeah. Huh. Yeah, because he doesn't have the temp the temperature isn't up there because he's just the stoves and stuff. He's it, it's set pretty low too. I don't know what day it was filled because they only sent me their their statement. They didn't usually they send the little chips that show the date and the HST and all that. So I can't tell you. It's just the bill, the invoice is dated January 31st. So if it's down to 35% already, it's, it was a while back, probably. Um, okay, we move on to new business. Uh, I guess the newest business is uh, the kitchen proposal from Joseph. Um, he sort of pitched the idea to me and uh, and I said, well, put together a proposal, send it out, I'll send it out. I just got it today. So that's why we're getting it a little bit late, but um, don't obviously have to make any decisions on this right now. Something to consider. Uh, my <clears throat> main thing to him, I don't know if it mentions, I haven't gone through fully what he's put out here. Doesn't seem to mention it. He, he had sort of stated to me at one point, he, he was looking for sort of a longer term. Oh yeah, it does here, a three, three year. year agreement. And I stated to him, I was quite hesitant about that, that based on the fact it is a community hall and that's sort of how we'd like to, you know, maintain, uh, maintain it to have it exclusively used for that purpose. Although being, you know, obviously the consistent rent, guaranteed rent is nice. It does take away uh, a lot of space that's able to be used. So I, I said, be quite hesitant in that factor but again it's not my decision so um but uh, I'd, I'd be on the same page with you yeah that there's a there's a lot of christmas functions that go in that everybody brings their own potluck and they're not going to be interested in in buying empanadas from him when everybody brings something themselves yeah yeah it becomes a limited menu for sure yeah and cost and yeah there's a lot of catches to that for sure and i don't even know what the logistics and legalities are around that i mean the only bet you know the only long-term potential benefit like i was saying is the rent but you know is if covid concerns continue then this is you know or you know this is obviously the best uh, operation of the space, but to commit for three years, I really don't see things, you know, I, I see him potentially being there through the summer. And then I think once we get around to the later fall, hopefully we'll be hosting Christmas parties again in, in, uh, in November. So. Yeah. And I, I don't know, Monica or, or Mary can probably answer that. Um, what is the rental fees that we get from the Christmas, you know, and even, even buck and does, like you gotta be able to shut it off. Yeah. And then the people don't have access to the kitchen to do their lunches and all that other stuff. So it limits your capacity in buck and doe season even. Yeah. I do like the idea of an upgraded kitchen. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I think, and and um, we had talked years ago about upgrading the kitchen and being in a position to uh, renting it out as a commercial kitchen. So, um, but yeah, the three years is stickler. Yeah, the, the the sinks the sinks I understand. Refrigeration, it's not terrible for what goes on down there the two fridges that were there were, were fine. Um, the ovens, I don't think are even that old for most people's Christmas functions. It's enough that you can keep something warm. Um, but as a commercial kitchen that you're trying to, to bake larger quantities, yes, that becomes 
but how often does that really, other than Joseph, really happen? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I don't think we we have to make a decision on this right right away. Like, um, I'll, I'll go over it. I'll, go over it a little bit more and but uh, I you know I'll give him the basic responses the general as I'd stated before the concern is obviously the length of time and uh, and uh, yeah and just the fact that having one person utilizing that space full time I don't know if it's you know I, I think that would really hurt the the community spirit of the hall, right? Yeah. You're, if you tie that, you have to buy, have this person cater, the people will just go somewhere else. Yeah. Because yeah. I yeah. know different times we wanted, we're going to do something even through work, and you had to use this cater, and no, we, yeah. we didn't want that. But, so, yeah. And I, I think if you add up all the rentals that we get from Christmas and whatever, we probably do pretty good at offsetting the 12,000 that he's paying per year. If he's a thousand dollars a month, it's only $12,000 income. Yeah, yeah. By the time you get all the Christmas parties and stuff that goes on, you know, you I want can me see to, us recoup it. Sorry. Go do ahead. Do you want me to add it as an agenda item for March? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it would be good to look into that, uh, Mary. If you don't mind, just just getting a rough annual income. Um, I, I'll know. have to, I I have to I'll have to request that from Emmy because yeah. I um, I didn't get my records back for 2019, so I don't have yeah. any records here to look back on. Yeah, that, yeah, and that's why we, if we put it off to March, then then we have a, a number of value. And, and once again, my thought is, you know, yeah, sure, we're getting 12 from him. If 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 we ourselves are only, you know, bringing in 10 off of that, I think the value of it, you know, it is a community hall. It is to be a service to the community that that still has greater value. Do you want to um, just as a rental income period or do you want it broken down? If you could kind of break it down to the downstairs rentals specifically and then let's say you know like with a buck and dough i don't what's the buck and dough rental it's like 450 or something so you know 150 of a buck and dough rental you know a third of it from that um could be attributed to that space as well yeah i don't know what i mean emmy whatever you ask she she just pulls out of her Excel yeah, and she can always do it. I don't know if she would be able to do it to that kind of breakdown, but I'll ask yeah. her Yeah, okay. if, if she can, she will in about 45 seconds. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Any other questions regarding that proposal? You need to start paying more attention to your mask, young lady. Take an opportunity to go over it again, and then, we, as I say, we can discuss and then make a final decision and for the March uh, meeting. Right. Uh, yeah, and I guess, uh, Monica, I mean, obviously, we really don't know. Do people inquiring for summer or, like, April, May rentals. Like, I mean, I really, I really did, not sure where we're going to be at there. I kind of doubt we'll have the opportunity, but are people inquiring? Uh, yeah, like March and April are pretty booked, but they're starting to cancel now. Yeah. And then for 2022, I got a pile of books already. Wow. Okay. Again? Super. But the from last year to this year are now canceled altogether. Yeah. Um, other new news, new business. 
received an email from um, Bill Hewitt from the evening hall and uh, and Doug can, can give us more details on this, but I guess tomorrow there's a closed meeting uh, for the council uh, in discussions about the future of the halls. Doug, if you have an opportunity, give us a little update on what that is going to entail, what we need to know about that. Sure. I'm getting uh, first of all, I'm getting some feedback from uh, yeah, somebody somebody's got there. TV on in the background. Uh, yeah, just uh, throw, put, put yourselves on mute there, guys, uh, yeah, because there's some feedback here. Anyway, no, regarding the community halls uh, review tomorrow, yeah, so uh, um, uh, Terry Bashan he sent out some information today. I probably spent about four hours reading it, uh, it's pretty detailed. Um, got a headache <laughs> out of it. But anyway, uh, the bottom line, the takeaway from it is that uh, tomorrow the, the meeting's going to be in camera and uh, which initially I didn't want to see an in-camera meeting. I wanted it to be open, uh, to, be open to the public. But I, I do agree with this one being in camera because coming out of this meeting we'll maybe be talking about negotiations with, uh, with the, the various hall boards uh, anything and everything is on the table. Um, so here's the, uh, you know, like regarding the Duntroon Hall, you know, to meet the full FADS requirements, we're looking at like 1.6 million. To meet a modified FADS, we're looking at 825,000. That's if we do the work now, you know, and by the time we get to it, it'll probably be even more, uh, you know, because uh, just in uh, the, with inflation and everything. Uh, right now, the township only has about, what, 1.25 million. So let's say, uh, and then another 225,000 or 250,000 to go in this year. So let's say uh, 1.5 million, you divide that by six halls, that's only like 250,000 per hall. Plus you throw the station in the green on there. Now they don't have to, they already meet the FATS requirements, but if you, if you, uh, you, you throw them in there, that uh, brings it down to about 216,000 per hall that we have. And, uh, you know, like Duntroon requires, uh, if you just meet the uh, modified FADS uh, level, uh, Duntroon requires $800,000 worth of work. I was trying to pull up the uh, all the information here, but my computer, this uh, desktop computer I have just crashed. Uh, I think Nottawa requires about half a million. Um, Dunedin is about 400 and some thousand. Sunnydale's 600 and some thousand. Um, Brentwood's only 225,000. So basically, bottom line is we don't have the money. Well, we have to make some. Uh, we, we, I'm, I'm not sure what we're going to do. But my feeling with regards to the meeting tomorrow is to let Terry tell us what the options are. And he's, he's done a very detailed presentation. He seems to have a very good handle on it. And my feeling is to uh, let the township uh deal with the uh, uh you know deal with the hall boards and i will like personally i i i I'll probably stay out of it you know and uh, as much as I can. I, i'm still getting a bunch of feedback here so i, I don't know what uh, what's causing and anyway the uh uh but i i feel that each hall board should be handled individually but we should uh, make sure that everybody sort of gets the same amount of money, more or less. Um, so let's say, I, I'm just, you guys are good because you're in a strong position. You've got an active hall, you're, you're an active and strong board. So you're in a good position from that point of view. On the other hand, $800,000 to bring your, the Duntroon Hall up to, to FADS standard is a lot of money. So uh, anyway, um, so, you know, but that'll be between you and, uh, and the township and, you know, I'll be involved too, but, uh, you know, I, I don't have any suggestions at this point. So I think that you sort of, uh, I've always said this, uh, you know, you have to think outside of the box, think, think what's best for you guys. And, uh, and then uh, let the, uh, you know, try and do the deal with the township. For instance, you know, Dunedin Hall, and, you know, I don't want to speak out of turn, but, you know, I've been talking to Jen, uh, they, they've got a small hall board uh, you know, a, a number of their 
hall board where their committee are in their 70s and 80s you know if this requires us to you know go and uh, get a loan for you know like a 10 or 20 year loan you know are we going to commit the hall boards to fundraising for 10 or 20 years i mean you take the Dunedin hall pretty much all of their members other than jen are in their 70s or 80s you know like how are we tell them going to tell them that they have to you know keep on fundraising for the next 10 or 20 years so uh as i told jen and i think uh you know she actually alluded to this was that uh you know uh, the uh you know they're more interested in what's good for the community of dunedin and if that involves selling the hall and then turning around and uh you know maybe doing something else for the community of dunedin then that might be an option so anyway so I guess that anything and everything's on the table. And, you know, like I, I, I suppose the township may be in the, I, I guess they're in the, in the power position and that they, because they own the, the halls, they can just say, well, we're just gonna sell them or whatever. Uh, but uh, there's, uh, I think according to Terry's information that he sent out to us, I think he's willing to work with the, with the uh, various hall boards. And I think that uh, coming out of this, I, I suppose, will be a situation where the individual halls will, um, you know, like it, everybody will, will come up with a solution individually for each hall. It won't be, I don't think it'll be an overall solution for all the halls. I think each hall will have their own individual solution. And so that's up to you guys and uh, uh, to decide and uh, have some input on, um, you know, I've got my own feelings, I mean, you know, it's, uh, uh, but that's sort of secondary to, I think uh, you, you're sort of in the, the main negotiators. And so anyway, uh, tomorrow uh, we've got the meeting. I think we've got about three hours, you know, uh, it's proposed for three hours, probably the first hour and a half will be Terry doing all the talking. And then the next, you know, half of the meeting will just be council discussing how we want to move forward to the hall boards. And, uh, you know, as far as the discussions go, um, there, I don't think coming out of tomorrow's meeting, I, mean, I might be surprised, maybe, maybe I might be totally wrong, but I don't think coming out of tomorrow's meeting will be, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a sort of a, a take it or leave it option. I think there may be, you know, various options available that then Terry will talk to you about but I don't think uh, there will be any sort of uh, general consensus amongst council as to how we how we proceed. I think it'll just be a case of, um, you know, approaching every hall board on an individual basis, saying here's the situation as it stands. You know, what do you want to see for Dun Duntroon? What you know, what do they want to see for Nottawa? What do they want to see for Evening and, and such? So, what does each community wa want? Uh, how do they want to proceed? And then let's see if we can work with that particular hall board on an individual basis. So that's the way I see it, it going. But I mean, we haven't even had the meeting yet and I'm just one voice. So, but uh, anyway, what, what do you guys think? Uh, what, what's what, what's your feeling on that? Gord, you're still muted. Uh, I had a couple of questions. Just yeah. um, so, is it is, is it a hundred percent requirement that all township buildings be compliant to the fad or can they designate fad you know accessible hall, you know, halls so that if people require that for events they are available or does every hall have to comply if i believe it's everything in my the understanding Yeah, I, my understanding it's every municipally owned building has to comply. It's, it's every That's, public. Is that what you understand too? It's Dave? every public building, so churches are required too. Okay. Um, and, just, and, yeah. and the other thing was just uh, you know I, I I understand what Jen's saying that you sell the hall and you get the money for. I really don't see that as being a reality. I don't think Dunedin Hall will sell and or if if Dunedin Hall sells. I don't think Dunedin will see the money of that sale. So I'd be really surprised that, that you could see that as a like as a 
as a perk point yeah. in in this process. Yeah. Just I just be hesitant to sort of even it, from our standpoint, you know, oh, if we sell the hall, then all of a sudden there's all this money available to the community. I really don't see that as as an option. I don't think that will pan out the way it sounds like it might. Right. Well, maybe not. And and just to be clear, I mean, the, uh, Jen didn't really uh, throw that out there. That was me sort of saying yeah. that that was, uh, you know, a possibility because, the, you know, I mean, it's it, like I say, uh, uh, I was just throwing things out there and, you know, anything is available right now. That's, that's the impression I get, you know, uh, everything's on the table. Uh, and I get the impression that Terry wants to, you know, work with the communities and, you know, like I said, I, I don't really want to um, see us go out to the halls and, you know, on a collective uh, basis, I want to see us go out to the individual halls and say, okay, what's best for, for you? What's best for your hall? And so what's best for your hall and your community of Duntroon might be different than what's best for Sunnydale Corners or, or evening. Uh, the, I don't want to see us tomorrow getting into a hall versus hall situation. Well, you got so much money, so I want so much money or whatever. So you know, I don't want to see us get in, in, into that sort of battle. Um, uh, you know, so. Anyway, so what, what did they uh, base the numbers and, on? You know, Sorry, what did they base the numbers on to get to this 800,000? Uh, well, it was set uh, based on, uh, I think, Burnside's uh, report, I believe. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. I, I think Burnside's did, did the report, and that's what they based it on. So. So basically, an, that was up an upgrading or renovating to meet accessibility codes. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't bring it up. There's, I don't know if you can see it. There's, there's my computer screen right there. I'm trying to, you know, it's just a big blank. So anyway, um, yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure it was a Burnside's report. And, and they brought that report to council, uh, you know, I don't know, a year or so ago. And, uh, and such. So, I mean, that's just got to do with the, you know, the, the fads and uh, now there might be a few things that they could, uh, you know, the, they could eliminate out of that. But I mean, the, 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 the halls still have to be brought up. Some of them have to be brought up to, to the fire code for the kitchens and everything. Um, you know, I mean, you take the Duntroon Hall, for instance, you put, let's say $800,000 into that, that doesn't even include things like, an, you know, like if you need a new roof, then after doing that, that doesn't include anything like that. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, and, and all I can do is go by those numbers that were, that were, uh, presented to us. I mean, I'm not an engineer or anything, but that was, uh, uh, that was yeah, what was uh, quoted. I'd like to know what they're planning on doing to get to that number. Cause, um, like Jim and I have talked about it and uh, we've all talked about it at some point in time is changing the entrance coming in and out of that entrance would be, uh, a wheelchair accessible bathroom and a whether it's an elevator or a chair lift stair lift or whatever you want to call it um i can see it being a few hundred thousand i'm not just too sure what all they're including to get to the eight hundred thousand um, well i don't know I, I i didn't look at it that closely that part of it that closely i can I know for instance, report. Like, with the gun, that would be great if you could what's Thank that you. i can send the report i was going to send the report i i, I Okay. Yeah, I like I like copy too, please. Yeah. Anyway, and so what? Yeah. Uh, is, do you guys have any direction for me for going into that meeting tomorrow? Get us all you can get. <laughs> <laughs> Last hall standing. No. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it would be interesting to see that report. I mean, it, I. It, the lowest number you gave there was Brentwood. And the reason for that is it's a single level unit. So there's no, yeah, you don't need any lifts. You don't need any, like you, you, as soon as you, yeah, you're on one floor, it simplifies everything. Yeah. So I wonder yeah. if that was even a consideration for, you know, some of the other halls. It's just like, why do we need two floors sometimes if it's more cost effective to convert some of the halls just to one floor as opposed to you know putting in all this yeah. you know if you can keep it simple um but i don't even know if that was one of their considerations so that's why i'm curious to see the report 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, well, like I say, uh, you know, coming out of uh, like in tomorrow's meeting there, I, you know, I don't think that it'll be a case of we're going to be negotiating numbers. You know, it's, uh, it won't be a case of me saying, oh, I want 800,000 for Duntroon or 400 for Dunedin or, you know, we're not going to be, you know, doing that. That'll be between, I think, you and, and, uh, and the township. Uh, I think all that we're going to be doing tomorrow is uh, uh, Terry's going to be sort of showing us where we stand and the various options of how to proceed. And as I say, you know, my going into the meeting, unless they can convince me differently, going into the meeting, my position will be that we deal with each hall on an individual basis. And, but any money that's given out should be more or less equitable. So, uh, you know, uh, that, that's, and to the, to the community, for instance, you know, let's say that, and, and I'm just I'm just pulling this out of the sky. I, I this I don't know what's going to be said tomorrow, but let's say that they say to evening, uh, you know, well we're going to sell your hall, you know, and uh, because we don't need a hall in the evening, we're going to sell your hall. Well, you know, in, in return maybe they should give the people of evening something like in their their little park there, you know, like a pavilion or something like that. Uh, so, uh, or do, or does the money money from the sale of the hall? and land go back into the purse to upgrade halls. You know what I mean? So that it's, it, it, well, that, yep. I mean, I see it's coming out of a community, but it's staying in a community in staying in the community halls. So, yeah, it's, and they're all supposed to be all well, in by the township. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's possible. I mean, the township may say, okay, you know, like, like right now, there's there's nine community halls in the township when you include like uh, Stainer and Creamore and Station on the Green and then the six small halls. There's nine community halls in the township. You know, uh, do we need nine community halls? I, I don't know. Um, I got looking at it and, I, and the idea of the community halls is for community events to bring the community together. Uh, so, you know. Uh, so if they well, that, decide that, to sell, if that initial uh, that initial article in the Echo inferred that there was going to be some hard decisions had to be made. So that's mm -hmm. that's where we're yeah. at. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. I've sent it, so you guys have all the information there. Then. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Okay. I mean. Here's the other thing too. Uh, you know, my wife and I we were talking about this uh, today. So the community halls are designed for to bring the community together. So I don't know. I mean, like like you take Duntroon for instance. Well, the community is uh, includes the farmers around around there. So you know, I know when you have the uh, the Green Beer Day, that brings you know the farm boys and everything in, and uh, and everybody has a good time. And you have the Know It All Ball that brings the community together. But, you know, like, uh, uh, so I think you guys are doing okay in that regard, but for some of the other halls, are they actually being used by the community or are they just, you know, uh, yeah, like, for instance, uh, in Ottawa, and I'm just speculating here, like, uh, are people from Ottawa booking the, uh, or, uh, sorry, are people from Collingwood booking the Ottawa Hall for their events? And, uh, and uh, you know, sure, it's income for the Ottawa Hall, but is that helping the community of Ottawa? You know, so how, how many actual community events are they are they holding there? Uh, so anyway, those, those are all. Uh, well, and I think that I, I don't have the answers. In. Yeah, I mean, some of that is looking at like the calendar of events. You know, how how busy are those spaces? How utilized are they? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm sure this yeah. is this will go on for for a couple of years. I'm sure before. Like, are they just, just is the goal to make hold it? that thought? Yeah. Uh, well, well, he's gone for a second. I have, have the information that uh, Emmy sent me um, back in December when I was trying to figure out the incomes versus hydro and stuff to know what our budget was, kind of. And in sales of every year, um, 37, 33, 17 in 16, 28, 24, 37. 
that's thousand per year. So even if you take out in 19, we had um, a fair bit from the um, green beer day, you could still say you're averaging upper 20s, uh, thousand per year as income from rentals. So Joseph at 12,000 in the basement, and if it limits your upstairs, you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot yeah. is what I was kind of getting at. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't get us ahead at all. I, I, that, that was my thought, but had to table the proposal. Yep. Um, oh, what was I going to ask? Uh, yeah, if, if I could just finish my thought there, and sorry about that, my other phone was ringing. Uh, if I could just finish my, my thoughts. So basically the timeline I believe is uh, for uh, Terry or for the township anyway, to come to you guys uh, sometime in March or April, which is only, you know, like a month, two months away. I, I don't think, and then it's got to come back to council and, and he's talking about, uh, according to the timeline that he was showing us or the, in his report, you know, this being all wrapped up by July or, or thereabouts, uh, maybe August. I, I don't know. I, I think this is going to be going until till the fall. I think there's going to be a lot of back and forth on this because it's, 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 it is pretty involved. So. so he's thinking a like final decisions on the fate of the halls by July is in his time. <laughs> Yeah, certainly it was in the summer. Like I said, I don't have the report in front of me because it's uh, my my computer crashed. But uh, certainly sometime in the summer. Maybe it was later in the summer. But uh, certainly in the summer, he was uh, thinking about having the final report done and, and such. So, but he's going to be coming. Like we, we, council's meeting in camera tomorrow. We'll see what we what comes out of that. Right now, he doesn't have a slotted for another meeting of council. Uh, he's, uh, I think the next meeting that he's got will be with the hall boards. Uh, but, and then he's got public meetings in there. You know, he wants to have public meetings as well. But, uh, you know, depending on what we decide tomorrow, we may in fact decide that we need another meeting as just as the council prior to going to the hall boards. But right now that hasn't been sort of scheduled in there yet. Uh, Uh, this all being said, um, sort of raises concerns, and I'm sure everyone will agree. It's just like we're uh, putting a lot of money into the hall right now. Yeah. Sh should we be reconsidering some of the those decisions if all of a sudden we spend thirty grand over the next six months only to find out that? The halls are, you know, our, our hall is slotted as one to be um, put on the chopping block. So that's something we should all consider for our next meeting. We'll obviously have probably no, more information by March, but. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that would be a consideration to, you know, something to consider. All right. Uh, on that somber note, <laughs> <laughs> anybody sure else have any? Be, uh, the bearer of better news, but that, that's that's where it is. That's that's uh, where things stand. And like I say, uh, the, you know, we're just having our first meeting tomorrow. I, what I'll do, Gord, I, I will let you know what, you know, because it's an in-camera meeting, I, I won't be able to divulge any details, but I'll let you know, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you an email with the general tone of the meeting tomorrow, you know, and, and let you know uh, about that. Yeah. So. Okay. And because it's in camera, we can, we can actually view the meeting following, right? Like later it'll be posted or no? No, no. If it's so in camera, it's in cameras not, not to be made public. It's just, Confidential. Exactly. And the, the reason for it uh, being in camera and it won't be made public is because there will be coming out of that meeting, there will be negotiations with the hall board. So uh, if there's any sort of negotiations that are pending on anything, then council has to go in camera.
to discuss it beforehand and and it cannot be made public then because then that would be showing our hand in the in the negotiations so if if down the road you were able to have access to that meeting to what was said in that meeting then you could say you know then that would give uh, you know that that would put the township at an unfair advantage or a disadvantage you know uh, when they're actually negotiating with you because you would know what was said, said in, in the uh, the meeting also you know there is a possibility one of the options will be to sell one or more board one or more halls and anything anytime we have to anytime we're selling any sort of municipal building or or property you know that's got to be dealt with in camera so anyway so that's the reason why tomorrow's meeting is in camera but i'm hopeful that after that it's all uh, in open session All right, any other uh, comments from the board? Okay, well, I guess- I, I was just reading through the report a little bit there. Um, it, 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 they're just giving you a number that doesn't really say what they're doing, yeah. how they got to that number. So like, you know, are they looking at $500,000 for an addition up front and $300,000 for work within the building? I don't know yet. Yeah. Well, those, I guess those are some of the inquiries we, we will make when we start yeah. getting into it. And then the, the decision making is can we come up with our own uh, analysis to you know combat that if we need to? Mm -hmm. Something that is in compliance. I, know, I noticed Jim has joined us. Have you uh, given any more thought to the front entrance and what? Our options were there, Jim? Uh, not while it's been on my mind for years. <laughs> so I haven't <laughs> thought about it anymore <laughs> in the last few weeks. But it, it is good. I haven't heard uh, anything back from the township on the interior work, by the way. I was right. kind of waiting till Scott McLeod reached out. And then hopefully we're, I'm kind of catching up a little bit here under the gun so much that I can't put much thought beyond uh, at the moment. Yeah. Right. But it would well, be good. Doug, I think it, it, is a, it is a logical idea. I have a feeling the bureaucratic process may hinder it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Hinder the what, the permits? To, to get every to get everything in place for doing it this summer yeah like it would be nice but I just uh, I even not yeah. even if I had nothing else to do and could jump on it full time I think it would be a slow Doug what do you think <laughs> you guys make quick decisions there, are, right? what are you talking about the are you talking about the front entrance or are you talking yes. about the interior no Jim and I entrance. discussed Jim and I discussed doing that because the front entrance is going to be out of commission while there an addition goes on is that this summer when nothing is going on mm -hmm. because next year we're booked up for a whole bunch of stuff that you can't have the front end ripped apart mm -hmm. if you could get the base structure in and at least have an entrance whether it was fully wheelchair accessible or whatever it's just the basis was there and then we can work within that in in a January, February type thing, as long as the main outside work was done. But as Jim says, and I agree with it, it would be great if we could pull something out, but I can't see it. I will still uh, if try to make it move forward somehow, just to see, because it is something we want to do anyway. It would be great, as we did with the whole stage thing you know like we've had that for years and we tweaked it a bit at the end but like to have to have something worked out would be nice to know what the future holds you know so i, I think we're waiting on doug to have his meeting tomorrow and find out what terry has to say about the report and then once we have that information we can decide our course of action from that I was just speaking with the mayor this afternoon on one of my other 
volunteer projects, right? That Doug's been helping with. Um, and uh, he brought up the, this hall thing, which I take it you guys were just talking about the accessibility and stuff like that. And he spoke to me a couple of weeks ago about it. From his perspective, I would say, or from my perspective of his position, I don't think Dunstroon has much to worry about. It's it's because he's brought up a few times with me halls that you know sit for months with nothing happening in them, uh, which is the sad case of you know those are the ones that are more of concern I think than a place like ours where in the winter there's stuff in there every week yeah. unless it snows like today. So that's so. All right. Um, Jim, just uh, when we were talking about uh, consideration that now we're in a red zone and uh, the we're trying to find out what the work uh, possibilities are at the hall, is, is, are we in a permitting process right now or? Yeah, they're yeah. releasing permits now. Okay. And yeah. we're, we have submitted? Well, we've, it's sent to Terry and to Scott McLeod okay. for them to carry on with. Okay. So I should, uh, sorry, did I not send it to everybody? I never, I'll send it. I just added dimensions and notes and kind of did the changes we talked about, keeping the stairs, yeah. things like that. Okay. And kind of passed it off to them because the thing needs to have I think both, an, I believe by the building code, I think it needs both an engineer's and an architect stamp. Of course, the township have Burnside on board for engineering, if that is the case. I don't know what they'll do for an architect stamp. So he was, Scott was going to see what they could do. Um, and it's just the way the building code is because it's an assembly building, right? Like so. Um, I'm sure none of us think that the work that we're proposing warrants such thoroughness. Yeah. They just have to follow the rules, not be. So, so yeah, I don't think I've heard. I'm only at like 200 emails behind. I don't think I saw one from Scott McClellan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kayla, you had something to say? No, I'm laughing at you. I'm trying to go get a popsicle, but you called me back. So I feel like that's a no go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. It's good. good that it's in the queue. Um, great. Any other comments? No, we all good. Yep. All right. So next meeting is set for March 16th. 2021, 7 p.m. Um, now I have something to say. Oh. <clears throat> and then I'll go get my popsicle. Oh. Um, Roz had submitted a garden proposal. Oh. I believe, let me see if I can bring it up. Uh, I'll find it. In the dog park? <laughs> there it is. Uh, so Roz says I'd like to propose planting a pollinator and bird friendly garden by the entrance to the hall and also planting beds around the base of new trees which would create a barrier from the lawnmowers and weed whackers I'd put in ground level weed barriers so it would easily be mowed near and kept net neat uh, I choose low maintenance native plants I have a few good sources for these and also have seeds from my farm if anyone thought it would help the hall at all, I could also apply for a wildlife habitat certification with the Canadian Wildlife Federation. We'd get a little sign and maybe people could find that interesting. Uh, I would also need permission to buy things, but I don't think it would cost too much. These would be perennials and self-seeding varieties. I like it. Yeah, can, can, can you put her proposal on the next meeting's agenda? Yep. Because obviously we won't be getting around to planting any gardens for by the looks of it, three months. So uh, yeah, we can look over that and discuss some of those details. Okay. 
Yeah, around the trees, I have no problem with anything at the front entrance until you get the front entrance rebuilt yeah. or figure out what's going on. You're, you could be wasting money on that one. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jim, did you have anything to mention about the trees and the discussions <laughs> with the... <laughs> I'll go get my popsicle now. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> I, I haven't heard anything. I'm poor Terry. I didn't mean to take it out of him, but I yeah. But know. even he, you know what? Even even based on his reply, I don't think anybody from you know the township that one tree is blatantly hit by a plow. Like it's leaning why? horizontally. <laughs> why are you winging back the snow there and hitting a tree? Just astounds me. Doug, you, oh yeah, maybe you did see my, because I copied all, where are you? I can, yeah, I think Doug, you yeah. saw that. It was good entertainment, I'll admit. Uh, <laughs> I was like, like, it's just, and there was, what it was amazing, it was off the top of my head, you know, I thought, oh, maybe there's been six trees or something over the years, and then you start actually counting them, they realize the, how many have been bashed and hit and for no reason, so. Anyway, I really think we should try and get the snow plows out of there. Yeah. Because they just make a mess. They're making a mess of the place. Let Eric blow the snow. It's, he's like, he's an amazing operator and just tuck, chuck it all into the park and be done with it. I think they use it as a turnaround, don't they? Isn't that sort of... Yeah, yeah. that's where yeah. the gate... The gate, we've talked when Shane was still around, we had talked about a gate on that end. It would help uh, us everybody. Hmm? It's clear, it's not all, it's not just Clearview, though. It's the county guys are in there. Like yeah. hydro, hydro trucks. Yeah, I can. Yeah, no. and it would be fine if the road, if the parking lot had been built for truck traffic, but like Steve yeah. Safe said right away, he said, well, it's not built for trucks. It was built for cars to park. And it's like, oh. That's, so that it yeah. is a problem that having that loop through, but in the winter, we don't really need the loop through. Just leave it blocked off, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> then put a gate on it and we open the gate for events or something like that. So. Maybe we put that on the next, uh, yeah. next agenda. Discussions of, of in, installing a gate at the uh, West End. Kayla, you back with your popsicle? You can answer that? Yeah, it's on the next agenda. Okay. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Kayla. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, next meeting is set for March 16th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Be it resolved that the Duntrue and Hall Board meeting be adjourned at 8.14 p.m on this beautiful February 16th evening. Hey, Jim, can you call me when you're done the meeting? Who? Jim, you call me? Yeah, I can call you. Okay, thanks. Okay, nice Night, to everybody. see you all. Good night. Okay. Bye, bye. 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 Good night, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.